So, uh, our hero, Dravidians. Morpheus, playing as the Dravidians. Versus Ivan P. Ivan App, playing as the Gajaras. Now, Gajaras, super strong. He hasn't found his other two sheep, I guess, though. Oh, there they are. Um, yeah, it's pretty hard to punish that. He just has basically, like, one and a half villagers collecting food infinitely for free from the start of the game. So, it's kind of, like, better than Mayan's bonus. And you also don't start with less food. And you don't get housed at the start of the game. So, it's, like, uh, pretty good. Pretty good. And... Uh, on the other hand, we have Dravidians who get 200 wood in the next age, which is, uh, it's something, but you can't really hit any special timings with that. I guess you kind of can. You know what? Like, I've been thinking with Dravidians, since you have to balance your economy in that way, you could probably just, instead of going for the normal lumber camp time, you could probably just put everything on food and get up really fast with just less on wood. And you could probably hit some faster timings with this, but you have to play really weird. Um... Like, if you go to wood at the normal time, you the earliest you're really going to get up if you go three on wood here is, like, 19 pop. So, if you wanted to play kind of, like, Mongols up times, you'd have to... You, you could put, like, 10 on food first and then go to lumber. Um, and then you could probably... You'd still be able to afford your stable because of the Dravidians. But, I mean, it's not like Scouts play is good for them. There's kind of no reason to have a, a stable with this Civ. So, it's like... Yeah, I don't know. It's a weird Civ to play. Uh, but anyways. Uh, let's see what happens. That's what we're here. So, 1400 play. Pretty solid. How I would play this map, in terms of walling, would be in front of the berries to the TC here. So, like this. And then, in front of the gold, probably to here. Could go to the edge here, or, like, to this wood line. Either way. You'd probably just secure this with a TC anyways. So, just going to the spores is probably a little safer. Um, it's just less walling as well. Like, to here instead of going to here um yeah and then and then on this side i just wall to the the wood line and then wall to here so it, you never want to wall this in because this is kind of useless for you right now so yeah you just do your initial walls would be yeah house here house here maybe even the barracks in front but you want to like loop it around to the tc so let's see how it happens Right. Oh, it has my tournament elo? What? Insane. I don't play that many tournaments, though. Yeah, it has my real name in there, too. That's uh from Liquipedia, though, so it is public. It's fine. Have you played, or have you ever used small berries mod? No. This, these berries are fine. Okay, this barracks touching the berries is maybe not as good. I would have put it in front. Like, yeah, you can wall with the berries as part of the wall, but I, I prefer having extra space around it. Because also, like, if you place the barracks here, the mill's here, then later on your mill or your farms are going to be exposed, right? So if you go in front of the berries, then you have extra space for farms later. It costs you a little bit more here, but I think it's worth it, just in general. And... That was strange. Why Why are we collecting long-distance stone like this? Or gold? I guess what we're doing... Oh, we're, we're going men-at-arms skirms. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, like, you're, you're going in front of the berries anyways. This barracks could have just been a little more forward. Um, so, yeah, men-at-arms skirms. Okay. I think that that's probably a good play with Dravidians. And into Gajars. Gajars, if they struggle against anything, it is infantry play. Although they just go crossbowmen, so not really. But, I mean... They could potentially struggle against infantry play if they just, like, try and play stable. Why is blue three vills behind? Ah, uh, because he clicked up way earlier. Gajars are, as I said, like, they basically have one and a half villagers collecting food from the start of the game for free. So they can just go up quite a bit faster. And it doesn't even hurt their economy. So, yeah. Oh, man. And if they go up faster, they also have this, their camel scout just kills the scout cap for free. You pretty much just should have fought him there and, like, uh, lost a little bit of HP, but... Or he would you would have killed a little bit of HP here. Four militia? Wait, what? Can you afford that? No way. Okay, I don't like how you long-distance mined, like, a bunch of gold early, and then you ended up building the mining camp anyways. That kind of doesn't really make any sense. Like, if you're gonna get a mining camp, then don't long-distance any. Except for, like, maybe the first ten if you really need the third militia out, but, like... Uh, anyways. It's just not efficient to long-distance your gold 
So, yeah, range is coming up. We, why do we have nothing on berries, actually? Wait, what? Like, if you're going men-at-arms, you, you kind of need dudes on berries. Especially if you're going to go four men-at-arms. You're going to idle your TC for, like, three minutes in Feudal Age at this rate. That's my prediction. Skirm! Okay, we got to pay attention to the economy here. We can't be making skirms when we have three on food and nothing in the bank. Um, also, you, you built a mining camp, so, like, make a archer. It's just kind of better. Although, like, he is going archers. Like, you would rather have skirms, but your economy is not set up to make skirms here. Look, we're going to be idling like crazy now. So... The, the problem here is that you're trying to make units that you didn't set up your economy for. And it's just going to kill you. Basically. Four men-at-arms is very rarely worth it. Especially against a sieve that's up so fast. Like, four men-at-arms is good when your opponent is, like, Byzantines or Spanish. Like, a slower starting sieve. But against a sieve that, that, um, that can just get up so fast, it doesn't matter if you have three, four, five men-at-arms. They're all going to do absolutely nothing. Or at least they're going to do all the same amount of damage, pretty much. Okay. He has Fletching, right? Like, no, he doesn't have Fletching yet. He, he got the Blacksmith, but he, he also didn't put enough on food to afford Fletching. But uh, anyways, you you will not kill this archery range. Because if it gets low, he can just repair it. The only way you kill this archery range is if you also had a tower here. Just wanted to be aggressive against Gajars. Yeah. That's not the way to do it, though. Like, yeah, you want to be aggressive, potentially, but you you don't really want to go for four men at arms. Like, that's just too many here. You get half price men at arms upgrade though, so you can you can almost justify it because, well, with a regular sieve, you, it's the same cost to get four with Dravidians as it is to get um, three with a regular sieve, just because the half price men at arms. But still, it's like. I'd rather invest that into something else. Like, you idled your TC for so long here. You you just hurt yourself by going for this, actually. Like, you would have been better just not making any military. Or, like, going just one range defensive skirms. Than going for this and hurting the economy. So, um, I think the main issue here was you didn't have enough on berries. And also going for that fourth men at arms really hurt that. And, yeah, it's really just the idle TC. Like, how many bills is that? That's like four bills, right? Or no, three, three and a half, pretty much. So, it, it's like your opponent killed three and a half vills of yours, which is pretty much like game. Except for that he also idled his TC for a million years, so uh, it, it kind of balances out. Wanted to get to his mill. Yeah, well, wait, did you have scouting or no? Oh, you, you had scouting, but you, you will never get to his mill if it's in the back. And also, like, by the time you get there, he's just going to have military. Like, it's just not a, it's not a good strategy. You can't really, you can't really uh, exploit the mill unless the mill is on the front. Oh, was that a miss? Oh, we misclicked the stable. Oof, oof! Can't be losing our skirms like this. Those skirms cost villagers. Basically, when you idle your TC to get out military, you you better be doing economic damage, or at least you you better be doing like a ton of damage with them. I, I love how the men at arms are still terrorizing him. He should probably just kill them though, because they're super low. Anyways. Walls are coming down. Uh, we have two holes in the wall. Well, actually, no. We have three holes in the wall. Uh, I mean, this side isn't walled either. But it's like... I mean, he's never going to go back here if there's like three wall, three holes in the wall. Uh, okay. I don't know if it's just me or if there's been a large increase of more skill player. But man, I've been having a rough time on the ladder. Yeah, well... Anybody who's around, like, mid-level, there's just a lot of competition. That's where most people are, because it's, well, that's it's mid-level for a reason. And so, you'll get some newer players who just, I don't know, they come from another game, or they just have aptitude for the game, and they, they climb pretty fast. Um, and then you'll have just a lot of, of other players, so yeah. I mean, uh, it makes sense. Some Sometimes it's hard. <laughs> Uh, okay. Kind of a weird fight going on here. Blue throwing his skirmishers. That's really good, actually, that he just threw those skirms. Uh, he's kind of, like, not sure what he wants to do with these these uh, cavalry units. He should have probably gone to your base to deny walls with them, because it's not like they're useful in a fight here. So, 
What Blue should have done for defense here was just not go out on the map until he actually can kill your dudes. Like, he, he could have had, I don't know, six skirms, and then he can just, he just defend behind walls, it's fine. T-West! Welcome, we're doing a little replay review. We're still in the early games of, or early stages of the game. In this Dravidians versus Gajaras, and uh, both players making quite a few mistakes here. Just, they're trying to get out too many military units and just, just forcing them to idle their TC because they don't have food. Ooh, and blue housing. Oy, oy, oy. Um, so yeah, you don't want to be doing too much. I think the key here to not idle your TC, because at this level, players should be able to keep the TC running if, like, it, it's they're not as limited by just, like, attention at this level, I find. It's more of setting up the economy wrong. So, you really want to be aware. Look at the number of villagers you have on food, and realize that you need six on food to maintain the TC. So, if you have, in the early game, if you don't have six on food, and you also aren't floating like a bunch of food, don't make any other food units until you get more farms. And also, if you have exactly six on food and you're maintaining villager production, you will not be able to afford anything else that costs food until you have more farms. So if you wanna, if you have six on food, you get the archery range and you wanna make it, get fletching, you have to add more farms, then get the blacksmith, then you can get fletching because you need to float a little bit, right? So I like to get up to nine on food before adding the blacksmith to get fletching. Unless I just have banked a bunch uh, on the way up, like maybe I skip men at arms upgrade for fletching. But um, yeah, you wanna really pay attention to your villager count on food in like early feudal age. It really helps. Cause just that alone will give you basically four more villagers than you would have had. Or, yeah, it would give you four more villagers than you had this game if you just flew into that fact. That include berries? Yeah, it's just a general. Like, obviously berries do collect a little bit slower, but yeah, if you have, like, if you have five on berries and four farmers, then you get the blacksmith there. You will have enough for fletching, just barely, uh, once the blacksmith's up, if you spend your next five, uh, 150 wood on it. This is assuming you're spending your wood. So every 60 wood, you spend your wood on a farm. That's the key to Feudal Age Macro. Every 60 wood, get a farm. Uh, but anyways, we are going to the Castle Age now. Uh, I guess you just don't realize that you have a million holes in your wall, but that's something you need to be paying attention to. Uh, this is, like, some people, they play, like, super zoomed out. They play, like, zoomed out, like, here, and you just can't really see things. That's one of the reasons why I play more zoomed in. So I can actually see things. So let's see the action here. Uh, you're going up. Well, actually, you're going up later, so... E. Oh, you really want this range. I can't believe you added more men at arms. They're just not effective. Unfortunately, they're just not good. But, Blue is throwing his skirms here. That's kind of good. Wait, he's going light cav? That makes no sense. Just make Shravamsha's man. They're so good. Light cav is so expensive. That's like three Shravamsha riders. What's better, upgrading these two guys to light cav? We're getting three Shravamsha riders here. Three Shravamsha's way better than upgrading these guys. He's making more light cap now. Ay ay ay. He's not really playing his sieve properly. Okay, well that's gonna give you a bit of a uh, bit of a chance to get back in this game. Now the fact that you're not actually walled could be bad though, because if Shri if he does make Shravamsha's, it's gonna be horrible. Wait, we're going forward with Bills? He was up first. Wait a sec. Oh, but I mean, he was up first, but he also threw his advantage for being up because he just threw all of his army. So honestly, like going forward is not, it's potentially not bad. I wouldn't do it because people will probably pick off the vill. Wait, what? Oh, never mind. They're just building a house here. Wait, what? I thought you were gonna go forward with Siege. Okay, that's kind of weird. Uh, okay, never mind. We're adding TCs. Wait, this TC makes no sense. You want to control the stone, but like, you have you have the stone here. You don't need two TCs on stone. You need this TC on the wood. You're gonna have some wood problems coming up soon, because you have no like. If he gets in with Shravamsha riders, you you can't protect your your uh, woodcutters really. Yo, the range is gonna go down. It's gonna go down. I can't believe it. It's gonna go down. Oh. 
This, uh, well, we need one more range unit, I guess. Oh! Spike! Oh, you realized it at the last second. Okay. More bills to, to wood, but yeah. So you're gonna eventually get to a Rumi Swordsman. That's gonna be good. Why are they still three men around? He made more! He made more! Insane. Well, with the Civ, you get half price Long Swordsman, too. It's like. As I said, Gujaras, they can struggle against infantry compositions. Um. Because they have to invest into a castle and get Chukrams. Before Chukrams, they, they kind of have to go for Crossbone, and your opponent didn't really do that this game. So, I mean, if you had like 10 Longswords slapping at this archery range, it would be so good. Longswordsman, forward siege on the hill. You actually kill him this game. It would have been sick. When you're going infantry, it's like pretty easy to go for um, for siege as well. Infantry and siege just, they, they synergize really well. You still have a hold here. But, anyways, neither player seems to notice. Okay, you can't really do anything against the Scorpions now, but what you can do is place a castle right here. That would be so good. But, you have to make army to support the villagers going forward, and then go for castle. That's one thing about pikemen that's good, is that you can support a castle drop against full cavalry, because you, like, your opponent can't attack your pikemen. So... You can kind you can't really force him to attack you, but also if he doesn't take a fight, then he gets a castle on his face. So it's like you kind of force him to either take a bad fight or he gets a castle on his face. So it this is where pikemen are good if you're gonna go for that kind of play. But you know what's good is that you don't really have to have a proper plan in mind if you just go three TC and boom. Because your economy is just gonna be good no matter what. So uh, your economy is so far ahead that it almost doesn't even matter what you do at this point. Because you're just really far ahead. And you're going to continue to be far ahead because your opponent's... Like, he's just getting his third TC now. Um, and you do have quite a bit more map, I guess. Oh, you gave up on the plan of going for the castle, I guess. Okay, a little bit indecisive this game. I don't really know what your thought process is. Like, you don't really have a co coherent strategy here. Like, I can't predict what you're going to do. Because... You're not really, like, setting your economy up for anything in particular. Um, like, you've taken off of stone now, so you're not going for castle drop. And there it is. You'll finally find that hole. Um, yeah. So, having a, a plan, really useful. Just feels like we don't really have a plan here. Unpredictability is a skill, yeah. No plan means just boom. Yeah, exactly. That's what it looks yes. like. Oh, he got it. Oh, oh no, oh no. Oh. Three, three farms gone. 180 resources. And the Shravamsh just killed two units. What? Insane value. I cannot believe it. Man, where are your pikemen at? Like, just, you saw that thing go in a long time ago and you never sent anything after it. Just gotta send, like, one pikeman here, one pikeman here, and eventually it'll die. Okay, he has just random like a million scorpions. These things aren't really gonna do anything. As long as you don't just like patrol your guys into the scorpions, the scorpions will do nothing. Didn't want to play against Shravamsha, so Pike's only way to do it. Yeah. You know Longswordsman beat Shravamsha's as well. And with half price Longswordsman, also you already were on Men at Arms tech. Honestly, like not even booming this game and just going full Longswordsman with a siege. Like, forward siege would be so good. Obviously, you're more comfortable with booming, which it's better to be good at booming and then, like, start working on the more aggressive plays. But, um, yeah. Hey, your farms came down pretty fast. Your APM must be pretty quick. I'm going to predict that you're, like, 50 APM. We'll see if I'm right at the end. So, your opponent is going to potentially castle drop you here. You don't really have enough to fight this. I don't know. You kind of stop making military. Instead of 10 in the 10, 10 bills, we definitely needed to be making military a while ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's going to get a castle here. So this is the this is showing the importance of making military a bit earlier. You have three barracks, but you never really made... You didn't really utilize the barracks. Look, like 0%, 36%, 17 or what? A 0%. It's like... We're a little late to adding these units. Obviously, you wanted to go up, which still could be good. He is going to get a castle. Where is it? Yeah, like right there. 
juicy. You can't fight this. So this is what I'm saying. You castle drop, you force your opponent to make a bad, take a bad fight, or they get a castle on their face. Um, so... No, no, no. Can you do that? Okay, maybe. Maybe. You gotta go up here, though. If you just go up, you win, though. Making Mangonels is bad, because he's gonna have a castle, right? Well, we'll see if the one Mangonel can squish him, but if he's smart, he'll just, he'll just pull these back. Oh, and the pikes get in the way. Okay, well... Blue, what are you doing? Okay. Mangonel... Mm, it's like, kind of one for one here. It's not still not really worth it. What you need to do is go up, though. So, yeah. Mangonels are so expensive. Okay, I like what you're doing here. You're gonna be up first. He just didn't click up. Oh, man. Don't waste the mangonels. Oh! <laughs> so close. Mangonels can be good. It prevents a ram push, but it's like, they're really expensive. I wouldn't recommend it. All the time, anyways. Okay. Oh, he got in somehow. Ooh, dang. Okay, whatever. He'll be fine. Oh, you killed a, a dude. Why was that even there? Oh! Just slaughtered some of those. That's pretty good. Okay. Vodkin arrow coming in. Yeah. I, I like it, actually. Vodkin arrow ranges these bills. That's a really good buy here. Prevent him from taking the gold. Um, you're going to run out of gold eventually. But you're okay for now. Adding farms. Good. Good spending. Now, what's the plan, though? Like, you need to make something. You could be making the Slappy Boys here. You could be making... I guess you could go for... Um, go for what's it called the uh help upgrade but he could just make chakrams here which is what he's doing oh it looks like you targeted the castle you could be killing these but uh your castles stuck firing against his castle survive until you make elephant archers you're not set up for elephant archers this game you should not wait you're making a bear yeah like elephant archers aren't going to come into play for a long time and guess what you need you need a lot of gold for elephant archers. You don't have any gold. Your plan has to be, I need to make something that will allow me to take this castle out and retake this gold. This castle's potentially a mistake for him, but you only have one castle, so actually it's going to be good. Um, Dravidians do have bomber cannon now, though, so you could get chemistry and go for bombards. That would be a sick play. Okay, Treb. Okay, there we go. You want to have that castle selected instantly on, ca uh, on Imp. It's so important. Now, we don't have masonry in. So masonry, really good tech here when it's going to be a castle war. What it does is it increases your HP. And as an effect of increasing your HP, it also costs less per HP to repair. Because it's based on the maximum HP of the, uh, of the building. So the cost per HP to repair is less when you have masonry. And architecture and all that so you you do want to get those upgrades if not only just to repair your castles for cheaper uh, oh is he oh he's in range oh that's kind of good you could even garrison dudes to add more arrows that could be really good he's gonna have to reposition this which is gonna buy you a bit of time but yeah you can't repair your castle he can't repair his castle either right so um, if you can take this castle down then you repair, then you take this one down. That'd be sick. Yeah, yeah, you will just kill his bills here now. He can't repair. Oh, that's that's gonna be good. Yep. How's the housing? Okay, it's okay. Chemistry's coming in. Oh, I like it. You're in a pretty good spot here. You will eventually need to be making uh, like a proper military. Oh, we're sending bills maybe a little early. Although it looks like he's targeted your, your thing, your castle, so that's good. Nice. That's down. Now we take this one. It's got a mass repair. Chemistry's about to be in, so you gotta be get getting ready to to click a bombard here. It's like you gotta be looking at the production queue and being like, okay, it's almost an ah, oh, we didn't send enough bills to repair. Um, it, with masonry, we saved the castle though, I think. So this is where masonry would have been super good. Masonry, and then you just mass repair, and then you get a bombard. We need to get a bombard in the mix though. I think you forgot. Chemistry came in, and I don't think you've realized yet, but uh, one Bombard just completely saves you here. Yeah, Dr Dravidians got Bombard Cannons in the latest patch. They, Because they used to not have anything. Short on wood, yeah, but now we got it, so yeah, it's, it's there. 
but I think he's just forgotten. Oh, there it is. Okay, bombard in the mix. And we're housed because the castle went down. Oof. Oof. But he lost two castles and you lost only one. Okay, this could be ugly because he has four guys and you only have three. This is where you get your Mangonel into the mix. This is where uh, like a couple of Mangonels are pretty good. Even the Halbs can go in. Honestly, like the Halbs will kill these. We gotta repair the, the Trebs though. Oof, I don't know. Go, go, go. No, man, go. You had such a good timing there, but you're being too, uh, too conservative with your dudes. Like you're trying to wall out Trebs. What's that? That's not gonna do anything. Just go, man. What are we waiting for? Ay ay ay. Like you have mangonels, you have everything you need to stop this. You just needed to like go. Now he's gonna get in with these. Oh. I'd probably just send like three guys to the back. Oh, worst possible fight for you. Charging right into his uh, scorpions. You know, you killed them though. You kill everything here. Oh, the Slappy Boys were in the mix. I didn't even see them. Okay, sweet. Uh, you still haven't sent any Halbs up here though. Whenever you see a raid coming in, you just want to send like three Halbs. Like you saw it in, you even quick walled, but then you just didn't send any army after them. Okay, and Gajaras get Bombards too. They just get everything. What is this TC? I guess it kind of protects that. I guess Blue doesn't see it, right? Yeah, he doesn't even see it. He's making two castles. Uh, okay, nice. And we're going for the TC here. You cleaned everything up on the front, and we're going for the four TC on the gold. That's great, because you have to secure this gold. Because look, you have no gold. Where's your other gold at? Was it in your base? And you already? Oh yeah, it's up here. Okay, never mind. You have this gold too. Okay, sweet. I like the Elephant Archers here now. Elephant Archer Halbs is a pretty good comp. Pretty good. And then you just have Bombard Cannons and Trebs or whatever in the back. There is this stone. Do you see the stone? Yeah, you see the stone, you see the gold. Okay. Um, you kind of have everything that you need in this game to, to do a good job. Uh, you you were kind of over booming now though. We gotta switch to military mode. N none of this passive, passive nonsense. We gotta get going. Send a few halves to the bottom. Like just go down here. Send a few halves over here. Like you already kind of see this area, which is kind of funny. But uh, okay, we're adding the range. We're gonna speed it up a little bit here because I don't think we're gonna have anything super interesting for a little while. Way too many bills here. Obviously, paying attention to that. Getting some over here, splitting them a little bit better. And we're starting to take relics, both players. Neither of us really wanting to take that relic, but uh, anyways. So yeah, we only have the two traps, but that's enough. Blue's castle locations were really bad, by the way. He just like got those, but he should have put one here. One here is good, but here is like on the low ground. It's not good. This castle should have been on this peak instead of like on the low ground. Basically, he just, if you controlled this hill, you have the high ground against this castle and this castle. You could have put your trebs up here and then this would have died even faster. Ooh, throwing the elephants are not good, but it's fine. Oh, we got the special hat now. Let's go. Oh, the chakrams die so fast. The elephant archer is sick for Dravidians. Oh, come on. We gotta go scatter formation. Scatter formation. Oh yeah, Bombard Cannons are nothing against these. Ah, they're so good. Oh, this huge boom. Yeah, you just had way more economy. And uh, yeah, it was a pretty good defense. Obviously, I pointed out stuff that could have been done better, but Blue kinda didn't know what he was doing after, after he went for the castle drops. It's like, he didn't really have a follow-up. He didn't have a proper unit comp. He just like made some truck rooms, he made some bombard cannons, he made some hussars, but he didn't really like make a bunch of anything. And uh, yeah, he just kind of got overwhelmed here. Elephant archers are hard to deal with. He, like that number of bomber cannons should be able to deal with them, but he has to shoot and then fall back. He kind of let them get exposed and then they died. So yeah. Let's take a look at the statistics. 
feel like your jars don't really have much against halves. Well, shock crumbs are pretty good. I don't know. But yeah, infantry against Gajars forces him into Chakrams, and Chakrams are a unique unit from the castle, so they're not really the most, or they're not the greatest kind of unit to get into. Yeah, look at that. Oh, I guess you were at like 50 APM, but you're actually 34. Your opponent's 54, though. Uh, cool. Okay. Nice. Pretty even KD. It was just your opponent kind of didn't really have a plan. Look, he got chain mail and then he got Hussar upgrade. It's like he didn't really know what he wanted to do. He's just got a mix of mix of a bunch of random garbage. <laughs> 